Welcome to the B2B Content Show, a podcast about the how, what, and why of B2B content marketing. I'm Jeremy Shear, and my guest is Ryan George, Chief Marketing Officer at DocuPace. Ryan, it is great to have you on the show. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So uh, tell us about a memorable marketing moment from your career so far. Whew, there's been so many memorable marketing moments. Um, given today's financial markets, I can tell you, um, it brings me back to 2008, 2007, 2009 financial crisis where I was working at a mutual fund shop and I was working in PR. And so my job was to get the fund managers to go on CNBC and to do different um, different financial media. And they were, you know, markets were falling out, losing four or 5% a day. So as a 25 year old walking into a portfolio manager's office who's losing them, you know, $10 million a day was not the best time. Um, <laughs> But it got me some skills to think, think and learn on my feet as I went. Yeah, I'm sure. The, the I'm importance sure. of building strong relationships. Right. right. And timing, maybe. Timing is yeah. a good one. Sometimes for, you just need to turn around and walk out of the room. <laughs> That's right. And for anyone who happens to be listening, I don't know, like a year from now or what the, the markets today, are the, the markets at this point are just in total turmoil. Sure. It's, it's uh, the, the, the general. Yeah. The general U.S. economic conditions are a little um, foggy for the first time in a while. So I think yeah. that will regardless of when somebody's listening, they, they'll probably be the same way. Yeah. Well, whenever it is that you're listening, hopefully maybe it's gotten better by that point. I, hey, I we hope can all so. hope. I, we can all hope. So, OK. And now, of course, tell us a few words about DocuPace. Tell us what you guys are about. Yeah, so DocuPace is a fintech, wealth tech, a 20-year-old company. We like to think of ourselves as a 20-year-old startup, so mm -hmm. we still like to be innovative and try to be disruptive and agile. Um, but we work in the back office, so we basically automate all the operations that work behind the scenes in the financial services industry. So if you're working with an advisor and you need to sign an application, we digitize that process and route it through all the different systems. Um, and then more importantly, we serve as a connector between multiple technologies that a firm might use. And I think that's a, a critical point because a lot of technologies tend to not play and talk well together. And mm -hmm. Dr. Pace, we try to fix that. Okay, very cool. Now, I know that you found that sharing content, that sharing particular kind of content really resonates with your audience. And in it's, particular, it's content about the people that make DocuPace what it is. So. Why do you think that is? Why is, is sharing, you know, photos, videos, stuff about your people? Why do you think that's effective? Sure. I think, um, well, one, I think we, you know, we call these things social networks and I think they actually at the heart are still to be social. Um, and I think people like hearing about the updates of what's going on in other people's lives and we're still human, right? So it's, a, it's connected, especially like when you think back in COVID days where we didn't get to actually interact with people, um, you know, you can at least get an update on so-and-so. And I think people, if you've built the right professional network and the right professional community, they will be um, invested in the pod, in your achievements, They've invested in your development. And I think we see a lot of that even um, when we have new hires. You know, one of the things that I was telling my team is we need to make sure we're promoting all of our new hires because, again, some of those things um, get the most engagement. But also, we want that person who's joined us to feel like they're special, like, oh, they've joined the right team, like they found a home. And, and, you know, sort of having them be our, um, you know, putting them forward to the marketplace, I think helps do that. Okay. So it's good for employer branding and, and it's good for engagement with people outside the company. Give me some examples of the kinds of, of the kinds of people focused content that you're putting out there. You mentioned new hires as one example. Sure. What are some other examples? So new hires is one, um, we do a Halloween Zoom costume party uh, is another where we I take a couple of screenshots of everybody's costumes. That always gets a lot of engagement. Um, but professional achievements. So our general counsel, Kevin Armstrong, was named uh, one of the most influential black lawyers in America um, that got a high engagement. Um, so we doubled down on that. So this year, as I mentioned, is our 20th anniversary. Um, so we created a national holiday. It's actually official on the record. National Back Office Heroes Day, April 27th. Mm -hmm. um, have the file, the certificate and everything. Um, and with that, well, it's going to become an annual celebration of the people who work in the back office, which are our clients as well as our employees. So we have three awards, one for an employee back office hero, one for a customer back office hero, and then one for the end user back office hero that we'll give out each year. And the, um, 
the three announcements of those award winners this year were the three highest pieces of engagement that we've had all year. Mm, wow. And now, th- th- so you guys literally created this holiday. I like did. Officially. Did. Wow. I paid like you, $450 how... for it and everything. How do you, how do, how do you do that? Um, I think I just Googled how to create a national holiday and I ended up at this register. And so now it's, it's official. It's presented by DocuFace. And what I really wanted was something. So just backing up some, um, Tax season, which generally runs from February 1st through mid-April, is a really busy time in the financial services industry. And it's really hard on the back office people because the process volumes are up. They've got uh, strict timelines. And so that's why I placed it in late April. So it's sort of a celebration of all the work they've done that year. But it's also our key customer constituent. We are a back office technology. So we want to make sure that those people who often can get overlooked uh, feel appreciated. Wow, that's cool. You got to get with Hallmark and have them make some cards for that. I do need to get with Hallmark. Uh, right. But, but I mean, you talk about marketing achievements. I think one of the things that I have been successful in doing is trying to think differently about how can we get our message out there, our message across. And part of that is bringing in stuff that other verticals do, other areas of marketing that aren't necessarily financial services, sort of just being aware of what others can do, but also just trying to get creative and have fun. I think if we're not having, if you're not having fun doing my job, then or your job, like mm-hmm. you're doing it wrong. I, I totally agree, right? Because I, I think if you're having fun, then that'll that'll manifest itself in the work, in the content, and sure. and people will pick up on that. that you're, there's some enjoyment here that's going on. Um, so say a little bit more about how you share this content, um, what channels you share them through, like which platforms they're on, sort of how you frame sure. it, like how you present it to people. Sure. So mostly through LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, our, it's a long story. Our, we need to get better at Twitter um, and YouTube. We have an issue with a lost password that we're trying to track down. It's not so easy to get the account <laughs> mm-hmm. recovered. Um, but that's been our main channel, especially specifically like with I said, new IRAs and professional achievements. LinkedIn is really the right platform for that. It's where most of our networks and, and advisor community sits. It, um, but Facebook is fun too. Facebook is just a little, um, it's we would try to have more of sort of the fun stuff. It's not for like deeper content reading or and more in-depth stuff. Okay, so so on LinkedIn, just give me an example. Let's let's say you have a new hire. How do you present that on LinkedIn? How do you make it engaging for you know your audience? Yeah, so we've actually created a new. Um, this is new for us. I think we're just you know, just maybe in the early stages of doing so. But if we ask them for a photo, and they can always decline. So I say that's an important part. Some some people are like ah, I'm not so in social media. I, I don't want. It. It's like okay, that's fine. So always allow people to opt out, but we want to opt them in to everything awesome as possible. So give us a professional headshot. We'll put all the razzle dazzle around it. And, um, and that's one thing, like if you talk about engagement on a social platform, if you can see somebody's face and their eyes, you're going to get a lot more engagement than like the back of somebody's head or just like a static image. I think research has shown that people um, really engage with actually another human's face versus sort of like pictures of mountains or whatever. Hmm. Okay, so you're showing their face, and what kind of razzle dazzle are you putting around it? So, um, my team, specific one of my team members, Ashley, she's really good. She's basically a self taught Canva guru. So, we use Canva a lot to sort of dress stuff up, and they have so many templates that can get you most of the way there. And um, we also pay really good attention to what the others, the other marketing that we like, and we'll just take examples and put it in our Slack channel to come back to you when we need it. Okay. Yeah, Canva is a great tool. I use that all the time. Uh, for the cost, big, it's incredible. Yeah, big big shout out to Canva. Thanks thanks yeah. for that platform. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Like for people for people like me who are graphically challenged, you know, I can yeah, actually I mean, go on there and do some half decent stuff. I mean, you think back in the day with like you know, I have Adobe Creative Cloud. It's 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 more than my 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 simple knowledge set knows how to use. So you know, anything that's simple tools like there's we also use a. Um, sometimes use a, a thing called Pictochart, which is basically helps you make infographics easily. And it's a tool, it's very cheap. And so there's so many tools out there that you can find that really help you sort of dabble in design um, yeah. if you have sort of good design principles to follow. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, Canva, Canva is kind of amazing. So when we spoke a week or so ago to prepare for this interview, one thing you mentioned I thought was really interesting is that this kind of content we've been talking about helps you stand out from the competition um because like you know there's the you you could 
post about the tech, right? Like a, about that stuff. But that, I think in your words, you said that can become a little commodified. You know, it could be a little harder to stand out, but you feature the people and it helps you kind of differentiate. How does that work? Yep. So, I mean, I, I think that's a good example. And I can tell you sort of through the lens of our, um, what we call our advisor transitions team. So our advisor transitions team um, part, works on our business line, which is a smaller part of our business that helps advisor take their clients to a new destination. So if they want to change like the firm that they're associated or affiliated with, they can, advisor has the ability to do so, but it can be cumbersome to take the clients with them. So our, our transitions group works with those advisors to help get the, cl the clients signed, you know, repapered to the new destination as, as possible. But here's where, I mean, that's the technology side of it, but it's actually the team that leads the advisor through the transition that's most important because they kind of become their counselor or their guide through a journey that they've likely never taken before. So think if you're a successful advisor who spent 15, 20, 25 years building this business that you have, you know, your like your livelihood invested in, moving that to a different destination can be very, very nerve wracking, very anxiety ridden, questioning whether you're doing the right thing or, you know, are my clients going to be upset? So you should, if you sat in that group, which, which is based in Des Moines, Iowa, like they really are coaching. They said, you know, don't worry about it. We've got to take your wife out to dinner. We've got to cover for the weekend. We'll get this transition. We'll get back to you on Monday. And that sort of care, knowing what it means to the advisor, is that can't come from technology, right? The technology is just the mechanism with which we fulfill the process. Mm, okay. Do you think that this strategy works particularly well for the industry you're in because it is so personal in that way? Like you're really counting on these kind of one-to-one -one interactions. Do you think it's sort of peculiar to that or that any company could potentially benefit from showcasing their people in this way? I mean, I think technology is nothing without the people, right? So I think we're learning this, that it's not people or technology. It's the combination of the two that really is where the, the, the X factor comes from. And I think even if you're, if you think about your frustrations with technology, I was mentioning our lost account. I can't get a human to talk to you, which I still want the service. Like, you know, 99% of the time, I don't need a human, but in this case I do, and there's not one available. So like if there was a human to talk to, yeah, I could get my problem solved. And I think that's something that any technology company can take, like put your culture in, in your marketing, put your culture forward of your people, because it actually will resonate more than your capabilities. Because your capabilities, if you were to go to five of your competitors, I bet they sound about the same and look about the same, uh, but really it's okay. So what can I get? What's the value add? What's the experience they have? And working with a business like mine um, that, that they can help guide me through. Mm -hmm. So what's your advice for marketing teams that want to do more of this? You know, they say we got great people, great team. We want to start getting them out there more for the sure. reasons that you just described. How do you, what's the first step? So two things. First, model the way. So everybody marketing is opted in. Like marketing HR, get HR on board that they're opted in. So um, it's hard, you can't ask somebody to do something that you're doing yourself. The second thing would be get leadership involved. So specifically like the CEO or CFO or president, make sure that they're participating as well. There's going to be some that, you know, some people just don't want to participate and that's fine. There's lots of others who won't. At my last company, um, when we built a new website, we made sure that everybody in the company, regardless of if you're in the mailroom or the CEO, had a professional headshot photo, a professional bio available on our website. Um, because we wanted, again, we wanted to put our people first. And, you know, LinkedIn already had, it's, you know, some business leaders will say, well, I don't want to poach my people. They're already on LinkedIn. It's already out there. We just want to make yeah. sure they're presenting in, in a positive way. Plus, I guarantee you 90, 95% of those people are still using those bios we wrote for them today or mm -hmm. some version of them today. Yeah. Good point about getting a professional photo, right? It's yes. always amusing to me and, and a little alarming sometimes when I stumble on some company's website and you go to their team and it's like, a bunch of just random photos you know you, you yeah. still see that from time to time like photos people took on vacation it, and stuff you know? well it, our, it's not that bad in our case um so we have a distributed management team so we have people in california colorado texas i'm in texas uh, we have people all over the place so with COVID, it was impossible you know i couldn't mm -hmm. just schedule a photo shoot so last year i actually got one scheduled and it turns out the day wasn't the best like it was a foggy day the lighting wasn't great and it was like man but we're still using the photos because we have that's the best photos we have. But you do want to be consistent. Same, you know, same high quality photo. So it's clear, right. you know, not, you know, not a 36 KB, you know, caliber photo. Yeah. 
Yeah, no doubt. Okay, Ryan, thanks so much for sharing all this. Sounds like you guys have a lot of really great stuff going on. Thanks awesome. for taking your time to talk with us. Really appreciate it. Really enjoyed the conversation. Hey, I'm so grateful for you having me. Thank you.